This is me on Dead Viking. I want to talk to you not about this game, Tesla vs. Edison, one of my favorite games that recently came out. No, I want to talk to you about the expansion for Tesla vs. Edison that is currently in Kickstarter. This is the Tesla vs. Edison powering up. Um, it adds a lot of different things to the game, and it actually kind of subtly, well, I shouldn't even say subtly, it actually greatly changes, if you wish, the way you play the game as far as the scope of it. Now, one of the things I really loved about Tesla vs. Edison was the fact that it was a very harsh uh, uh, economic game that you could play and uh, be very backstabby and, and very constricting of your opponent's uh, actions and abilities and you could really hammer them with the stock market. Now, I love those types of games. And as I'll explain in, in, in the like the stuff that's added to the, the expansion section of this, this review is um, not everybody likes those games. I, I'm very, very fortunate in the fact that I have a group of people that, that has thick skin. Uh, we've been playing these games together for a good 30 years, and so we, we, we take it, we can take a, a rough go of a game uh, on the chin and, and come back for more. But I do know that people wanted a, a bit of a, I shouldn't say easier time, because the game is still difficult, and I shouldn't say lighter time either, because the game is still brain burning, but I think if people wanted a, a more as I say, garden-like game, uh, where everybody kind of works, not really works together, but, you know, at least, you know, nobody's, like, you know, firebombing your house <laughs> type of experience. Um, they've kind of altered the game up a little bit and, and made it more presentable. So, uh, to that group of people. Now, so, uh, with all that being said, uh, let me just go ahead and I'll touch on all the stuff that gets added to this expansion. And then, um, like, I, I, bottom line, if you own this base game, uh, you're going to want the expansion. Even if you don't want the new rule set, um, you can, for the cards and all the stuff they're adding, absolutely amazing, absolutely great. Um, but if you haven't picked up this base game um, because you've heard that maybe it, the, the way the game was played just wasn't going to fit your play style, please take a moment to take a listen to the video, and um, I'd strongly suggest backing it because I think you can get both the base game and the expansion uh, with the Kickstarter, and then you can get um, the whole thing put together, and you can have it for your enjoyment. All right, well, let's do this. Now, as I said, I'm not going to really go over how Tesla versus Edison is played. This is an expansion, and this is an expansion that adds a lot to the game. Not only does it add uh, more cards and more things, it actually does kind of delve a little bit further into the game and changes up exactly how it is played. Uh, now, I didn't think Tesla versus Edison needed any overhaul. I love that game. Um, it is a very strict, uh, very harsh uh, economic game that my friends and I enjoyed a great deal, uh, but I did have people uh, that I know Know that played it uh, that um, you know I'm not saying they, they, they couldn't handle how um, how volatile like the the stock market was or or how uh, how hard <laughs> like somebody could really uh, uh, jump on top of somebody and kind of uh, work them over if you will uh, but um, there is a market for a game that is uh, kinder and gentler and I mean the Tesla versus Edison theme I mean is very very cool it is a it is an amazing part of our American history and uh, the fact that you know, uh, turning it into a more of a Euro-friendlier game, I guess, uh, is not a bad thing. I mean, it just gives me another way to play the game, and I, I enjoy it. And so, like, depending upon who I'm going to be playing the game with, I, I can kind of decide. I can, you know, uh, discuss with the people and decide which type of game we want to play. So, uh, this is uh, what gets added to the game. Now, obviously, there is a, a brand new inventor. And the cool thing about this game, and I'm going to mention this probably a few times, is that when I first opened this up, and basically the first time I played Tesla versus Edison, I mean, it really told me about a lot of people uh, in American history that I never heard of before. And so this is one of those things where it's like each card has a little bit of information about the person. And then, you know, by and large, a lot of times I was like looking up these people uh, uh, on Wikipedia and like reading about their life story and stuff. So I find that pretty cool. There's lots of games out there that don't teach me anything. I'm just playing the game, right? But here I am playing a game with actual historical figures, and I'm actually, like, then after the fact, reading up about these people. And these had, people had pretty much fantastic, amazing lives, you know, from start to finish. And so uh, something I really enjoyed about the game, and I really appreciate that they took the time um, to, to put all this information there. But obviously, here we go. It's Madam C.J. Walker, and I'd really strongly suggest that you actually read about her. Um, she is uh, amazing. Uh, I'm not going to go too far into that, but you have 
Google, I'm assuming you're on the on the internet right now watching this, but um, take a moment to read about uh, read about her. It's pretty pretty fantastic, um, you know. But uh, she was the first self-made millionaire um, in uh, female self-made millionaire uh, in American history, um, and and she was also African American, which you know is just it's fantastic. It's I, I never heard of her prior to actually, and that that speaks volumes to my uh my upbringing my 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 history knowledge you know and my ignorance of, of certain things so uh but yeah so a fantastic thing and this is and she is included and she as you can see you might be saying this what is that and this that, and the other thing but i just want to make sure um you notice that like they added a sixth inventor so now you can play this game up to six people and any game that i've ever played with stocks or with money the more people you have the better it is because it's all all the people's like fingers in the pies and moving things up and down and changing things up and um you know if you if you've played economic games um in my opinion the more players you have the better it is so great we have a six player Obviously, it's purple. I love purple. I'm a Minnesota Vikings fan. So that's pretty cool, too. All right, so you're probably looking at this. This is the, uh, the your headquarters, and each person is going to get a headquarters. And they have, um, you know, all of, you know, Thompson and Maxim and all the guys, they all are going to have a headquarters. And you're going to put this tableau in front of you, and you can probably see there are going to be, like, these spots over here. This is, like, the person that you are. And then you have spots for your other people, your luminaries, that you're going to be having working for you uh, uh, like and you'll be able to fill those out and then you'll be able to use their powers and those are the ones where you know obviously uh, she's there and then when you use them obviously you flip them over to show that you've been used and like you have all the different powers and everything but they has there and it just functionally it works perfectly now they might be saying well why, what why is that why do we need that let me move that over real quick the reason for that is that each uh, each inventor is going to have, as you can see, there's a laboratory, there's a works, there's an office, there's a studio. And each one is going to have their own set of those cards that they're going to be used on those locations. And as the game progresses, they have the ability to uh, use them, or basically make them, make them known. So you're going to turn these face down in their locations, as you can see here. And part of uh, one of the actions that you can do, and I'm just going to quickly show you, there is a, a good new player aid that details everything. But one of the things, actions you can do is you can expand headquarters. And so basically you have to have a, uh, a luminary person up here that has the different locations. So you can see the laboratory, his lighting bolt, you know, and so you can see the icons. And so you have to have, you know, obviously she has all four. So she could activate one of these and turn it over. And each one of these these spots is going to have its own little special power that's going to give you. So, like Glenn Iyer, uh allows you to uh, don't have to pay a uh, patent fees. Um, so, like things like that. But I mean, just kind of looking through. So, uh, randomly, uh, Tesla's laboratory uh, plus one to when your company takes a technology action. So, uh, just basically, you've played games like this that you have certain ways that just break the rules or whatever. Now, the works cards are interesting because they actually add victory points in the game. We'll talk more about the victory points here in just a little bit. You might be saying victory points. What the heck? But anyway, so like plus one victory point for each level one and level two project you hold. Uh, let's just see the laboratory uh, for Maxim. Uh, after taking a technology action, gain two thousand per face. You know, so these are just ways that the the the, the heh, it's John Philip Sousa. I played tons of his music when I was in band. I had a I had a band teacher that uh, was just adored the John Philip Sousa stuff. So um, uh, immediately set your company fame marker to one on the future fame track. So different ways to break the rules and then they have so here's thompson uh plus two victory points for each level four project you hold now i didn't want to show you there's each each one gets four cards obviously the four down there i didn't want to go through each and every one i wasn't going to take the time to do that but so now each person when you get your inventor you you can look at each one of your cards and then you can possibly expand those out and plus the more you expand out your uh, headquarters, the more victory points it's worth at the end of the game. Once again, victory points, I'll get back to that in just a second. So, like, one, for if you expand once, it's worth one, then three, six, and ten. You can see it listed right over there. So, if you expand all four of them, you're going to get ten victory points uh, for that process. Uh, also, I should mention, uh, there's a couple other things. So, here we have some new propaganda guys, uh, new people. 
You might recognize these, uh, James Garfield, uh, Rutherford B. Hayes, Chester Arthur, uh, The Death of Ulysses S. Grant, uh, Benjamin Harrison, and Grover Cleveland. You might be able to, you can probably guess each one of these is the president, obviously. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Um, when are we going to get another president with a nice big beard? You know, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not saying that they should be one, but I mean, I'm kind of partial. Even Chester Arthur, look at that. That's some hardcore mutton chops he had going on there. Pretty cool, right? And so then, obviously, and even Grover Cleveland had a, had a kick butt mustache. We haven't had any Anybody have facial hair for how long? I don't know, forever. But anyway, so obviously, um, get, get some new cards as far as the propaganda cards go. Well, that's pretty awesome. And these are your new luminaries. Now, the cool thing about the luminaries are, is that all but one of them, except for Samuel Ansel, are famous women from our past that have certain powers and abilities. And once again, this is those things where I'm, I'm thinking, of, like, who, I had no idea who Edm Edmonia Lewis is. And so you see a sculptor of great acclaim. Uh, Lewis was an international success despite mixed Native American, African American heritage in a prejudiced time. So, I mean, so once again, here's one of those things where I'm, <laughs> I am going and I'm, I'm after after the game is over, I go and I research her and read about another fantastic person to read about as far as Wikipedia goes. So I think it is super cool that um, they, they recognize the fact that they did not have the diversification that they probably should have had with the original base game, and they've taken the time to do that. And, um, you know, and I think it's awesome that they've added these cards and added new luminaries that um, are going to pop up. And you can see there's, there's you know, some for each different phase. So there's some phase ones, a phase two, and I think, no, there wasn't a phase three. But, I mean, so new stuff. Uh, that you'll have access to uh, with those. Now, uh, I was going to tell you, oh, one more second, and I'll talk about the victory point stuff real quick, because there's a different way when the game ends, as far as I'm sorry, I want to talk to you about these. Okay, events. This is a brand new thing. So there are events, then you can see this is a little symbol for it, and these are like phase one events, phase two, and phase three. You're only going to use two for each one, because six turns... You're gonna, you know, you're gonna have two for each one. So these are just the, and once again, these are things that actually happened, and so they have different phases. So uh, the Edison machine work strike. All technology advances uh, require plus one uh, this turn. Or um, like, and some of these are like an auction where you're gonna be auctioning uh, like to get certain things. Um, some of them are going to be like North American bank collapse. All patents require plus one uh, money this turn, and so forth. The 1888 blizzard. Uh, players cannot build HQ cards this turn. So if you want to do that, you wouldn't have that option. And then they obviously, um, as I'll just flip these over. So as like the phase two and phase three, you have more the like different things that you have access to. And so we have like uh, in phase three, here we have uh, the Virginia State Senate players that move the ACDC track one or more spaces during a propaganda action on their turn may move it one additional space. So, you know, and these once again are things that like you could research and I've done like, you know, as far as like the blizzard of 1888 and stuff like that stuff. Once again, historical things that have happened. And plus, I like event cards. I, I like games that have certain things where the unknown, you flip the card over and you're like, and that's what's going to affect us this turn. It's going to, you know, change up your uh, strategy, change up your tactics a little bit. Um, you know, if it, it's going to cost you more money to do something that you really wanted to do, you have to, you have to uh, change up your plans and, and figure out how you're going to afford that and stuff like that. And I like the fact that you're not going to use each and every one. You're going to use a limited number of them, and so you don't know which event is going to pop up uh, when the when the, the, the turn comes. So something great uh, that with that. All right, so I talked about the victory point stuff. Um, as I said, uh, a lot of people um, play this game and like the the stock market because that's that's what determined the winner. Um, a lot of people didn't ha had a problem with that. You could really tank most of the game and just play the stock market and 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 pull off a win in this game, which you know I didn't mind, but I knew some people had issues with that. And this is like I said, this is kind of a, a more eurification of the game, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just a different way to play the game. Like I said, depending on the people I'm playing with, uh, we decide which way we want to play. So as you can see um, in the final scoring, so you stock holdings, uh, each share of the highest priced company is worth six points, shares of the second five points. Now, still, when you're buying shares and having shares of your company, obviously, if you have like <laughs> the shares are of, of the like the buy highest stock, they're, it's going to be huge. I mean, those points are going to be like a large, large chunk. But you can't just focus on that and expect to win because you have final cash holding, six points for the most, five for the second. So, I mean, that obviously matters a little bit. Um, the HQ cards or whatever. And also, once again, everybody's works card is going to have a certain um, little bonus depending upon how you have worked on your on your uh, 
particularly gorgeous. And you might not have might not have revealed this, but in most games we've revealed them because you want the victory points. But so plus one victory point for each city uh, in your largest group of connected cities. So. You know, here's a situation that let me just let me dig out the rest of them just so you can kind of see those. Uh, so here's a plus five victory points if you hold a level five project. Um, let's see, here's works uh, plus one victory point for each level one, level two project. We already saw that one, sorry. And then we have plus one victory point for each group of your cities, uh, unconnected to another group of your cities. And plus five victory points if you hold at least one level one, two, three, or four, and four project. And finally, Plus two victory points for each level four project you hold. And so each one, and you might not reveal that. I mean, like I said, we always did. But the thing is, is with, with the victory points, is that you, uh, that, that's an extra little way. And how many times have you played a game where it's like, it comes down to like four victory points and three victory points. And this is that type of game. If you're playing with uh, like-minded people, you all can kind of, because of the fact that, once again, like I said, Eurification, like you aren't really able to just blast somebody uh, with, with the stock market in this game. You can't really, um, you know, uh, you can't be draconian in your actions. Um, you are uh, like, those little extra victory points can really make the most and really make make the difference in the game. Now, what do I think of it? I mean, like I said, it, it depends on what, what kind of group I have and what, what, what level we want to play. I really enjoy Euro games, and if I don't want to have a brain-burning, oh my gosh, is somebody going to kind of, you know, bend me over this next turn uh, type of time when I'm playing and not trying to uh, fight against that... I welcome uh, the addition of these actions. Uh, I think what they've done is amazing. And I think what they've done with, uh, like, as far as uh, kind of subtly uh, altering the game to, uh, uh, to a broader appeal, I think is, is a very, very good stylistic uh, choice and, and very well done, as a matter of fact. And I totally forgot one other thing as well. So if you only have, say, two people and you want to play a full six-person game, you are able to... Um, put bots in uh, to like control the actions of all the other uh, adventures. You can have one, you can have two, you can have up to six. And so each one of these, and they have um, both like the, the the hard version and then on the other side is like the easier version. Um, these will tell you on each turn, so it tells, it tells you which turn, one, two, three, four, five, six up at the top. It tells you what actions they'll take uh, at each Oops. <laughs> they'll tell you what actions they'll take in each phase of the game. And they have these for every single one of the adventures. And so as long as so if you want to play like a full six person game, you only got two people, or if you just want to play by yourself against all the other inventors, you have the option as well. And um, I have done it. I play. I didn't play a full game because I didn't have time to do that. But um, and you know, I'm normally not a very big solo game player, but I found it to be very challenging, even with the you know not as good side as far as uh, the 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 bots, if you will. So. Every single thing that they've added to this um, is a welcome addition. Um, you, you, I, there's no reason why you wouldn't just put the other cards in. There's no reason why you wouldn't have uh, the, the, the six person available in case somebody wanted to play that. I love the fact that we can build. I feel like I'm building something. I love games where I feel like I'm, I'm creating something and I have like a stable, if you will, or something that will alter the game. And plus the fact that like, you get to pick which one you want to do and pick which one you want to open up. And of course, like I said, I love games with events. So if you like Tesla versus Edison, I think you're going to love this uh, expansion. It uh, offers you a brand new way to play the game. You don't have to use that. You can use the information and the stuff that they gave you um, either with uh, the expansion or with, you know, with uh, the old way of playing or the new way. It works just fine. And um, I think, like I said, um, adding another player and on all the other extra stuff um, is a very welcome and added addition. So if you have any questions about the expansion, please ask away. I'll try to answer those to the best of my ability. As always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. And until next time, why don't you have yourself one heck of an awesome day? All right, bye-bye.